Hello. In this video, we're going to take a look at a design example uh, of how to design a circuit using an op amp with single supply operation. And so we have uh, an example of an inverting amplifier here, which I have already drawn. Uh, um, we're supposed to design it to be operated from a single supply of 24 volts. Uh, we want a close loop gain of negative 15. Our input resistance must be greater than or equal to 10 kilo ohms. It's supposed to operate a load of 2.5 kilo ohms. Uh, the range of frequencies of interest for our input signal is uh, uh, greater than or equal to 100 hertz. And we are going to set by design our low cutoff frequency to 50 hertz, so intentionally lower than that, um, that lowest frequency of interest. And then um, our headroom is 2 volts, and the headroom is just how far away we have to stay from the supply voltages, uh, both typically with the input voltages, but also with our output voltage. Um, if we try to get closer than, in this case, 2 volts to the supply, the idea is that our op-amp will, will start observing saturation effects of our op-amp. Uh, now, headroom of 2 volts is you know, used to be typical um, a few decades ago. Uh, nowadays, it's probably considered a, a large value of headroom. And uh, and to be honest, nowadays, you can even see um, rail-to-rail um, operation op amps. But just to, uh, for the sake of example, so that we can see how the calculations can be made uh, using a, some arbitrary value for headroom, I think this is adequate. So let's get this started. Um, we know that this is a an inverting amplifier, and so we know that the expression for the closed loop gain is going to be negative RF over RI. Uh, we want that to be equal to negative 15. There are multiple values of RF and RI that are going to meet that ratio. Uh, but notice that we also want our input resistance to be greater than or equal to 10 kilo ohms. So let's imagine that we selected just for the sake of example. Uh, that R i is exactly equal to 10 kilo ohms. Uh, in that case, uh, then we will have that R f. From here, we can see that R f then must be 15 times R i. And therefore, if we selected the light to be 10, um, this is going to be 150 kilo ohms. I'm going to go ahead and enter those values here. So my Vs is 24 volts, and I've just determined Ri is 10 kilo ohms, Rf is 150 kilo ohms. Uh, so far, so good. Let's go ahead and select the value of the capacitors. And again, let's assume that uh, we wanted to set our um, low cutoff frequencies to 50 hertz, both at the input and output high pass uh, networks. So FL at the input, this will be 1 over 2 pi CI times RI. And so I can calculate the value of CI, which will be 1 over 2 pi times FL, which I just said is 50, times RI, which is 10K. And I will get uh, 3.183 microfarads. And so let's imagine that I just chose... 3.3 microfarads. I FL out. Obviously, by the way, if uh, if I want to make approximation or, or pick the next available um, standard value for my capacitor or something like that, I always want to shoot higher because a higher value of capacitor is going to lower uh, that cut of frequency a little bit and I always uh, it's more conservative to go lower than to go higher as if I keep going higher I may be approaching my um, my uh, range of frequencies of interest for my signals this will be 1 over 2 pi C out in this case RL so I can calculate my C out as 1 over 2 pi FL which I'm gonna say it's 50 times RL is 2.5 kilo ohms and I come out with 12.7 uh, microfarads so let's imagine that I wanted to pick 15 microfarads
Now there are uh, multiple values that I could choose for my uh, resistors are in the voltage divider network, the resistor R there. Uh, as long as they're equal to each other, I should get the 24 volts. Now, if I want to uh, keep into consideration the input bias currents, I want to minimize the DC offsets due to input bias currents. I can use that since I already have those resistors connected there. I can use that as my compensation uh, resistor, the equivalent resistance there as my compensation resistor. And so in that case, I will want it to make uh, the resistance at that terminal, the positive input terminal, I will want to make it match the resistance in by the other, the negative input terminal. Now notice that uh, the DC offsets caused by the input bias current, it, it's a DC offset, it's a DC effect. And so when I try to calculate the equivalent resistance seen by um, any of the input terminals, really I'm just talking about the, the DC equivalent circuit in that case. So I will need to consider my capacitors being an open circuit, which means that the equivalent resistance seen at the negative input terminal um, is not RF in parallel with RI, as we have uh, done for uh, the inverting amplifier in the past when we didn't have the capacitor connected, but rather if the capacitor is an open, um, RI is basically a resistor going into an open circuit. No current is flowing through that resistor. And so the equivalent resistance seen by the negative input terminal is really RF. RL is also isolated by capacitor C out. And so it's going to be RF. And so that means that if I want to use my uh, parallel combination of resistors of value R as my compensation resistor to eliminate the effect of the input bias current, I will want to make uh, the equivalent resistance of those two resistors, which is R halves, equal to RF. And so I'll just say uh, to eliminate offset due to input bias current, use R in parallel with R, which is equal to R halves as my compensation resistor and therefore we want where R halves is equal to RF and therefore R is equal to 2RF or 300 kilo ohms. And again, that's not the step that we will necessarily need to take since we have not been told that we are to minimize the DC offsets. But if, um, if we're smart designers, we will do it because it comes at no extra cost. Um, so uh, the design is uh, pretty much complete. I just need to add the values of my capacitors here. So this was 3.3 microfarads. Uh, C out was 15 microfarads, RL, I didn't write it earlier, but it's 2.5 kilo ohms, as we are told. Uh, and that's about it. We were also given the headroom specification, or uh, we were told that the headroom is 2 volts. And that's going to impose a limit in my output voltage swing, uh, as well as my input uh, voltage range, my input and output voltage range. Now remember that my output voltage, uh, V out, I'm going to call it V out prime, the output voltage from the op amp is going to have a DC component, V out, plus the AC component, right? And um, my DC component, where V out is going to be equal to 24 divided by 2, because the two resistors are going to divide Vs. Um, between between the two. And so this will be 12 volts. That's my center line. That's my DC offset. And then uh, from there, I want to stay uh, 2 volts away from either ground or 24 volts, which is the value of my supply. And so I have that my output voltage little V out has to be less than or equal to Actually, I'm going to say first V out prime has to be less than or equal to um, uh, 2 volts between 2 volts and uh, 22 volts. And so we can see uh, that since 12 volts 
from 12 volts to 2 volts or to 22 volts, I have uh, basically a plus minus 10 volt voltage swing. And so basically my AC component has to be, I guess, between 0 and 10 or, um, or plus minus 10, I suppose. But I'm going to say it in absolute terms, between 0 and 10 volts. So that's my output voltage swing, plus minus 10 volts. My... So... Output voltage swing plus minus 10 volts. My uh, input voltage range is going to be determined by this uh, because basically my input, my output is going to be uh, the value of my input multiplied times the gain of the circuit. And so I can say it's going to be plus minus 10 volts divided by uh, the absolute value of the gain, which is uh, 15. And so it's going to be equal to plus minus 0.667 volts. That's for my input voltage range. Um, and that's it. We are done with our example for an op-amp with a single supply operation. Thank you.